Hello everybody and welcome to the My Body, My Mind, My Say Facebook Live Chat. My name is Aoife Kerwin. I was diagnosed with MS almost six years ago and I am delighted to be here today. As a blogger, it's so important to me to have information and experiences shared and I'm delighted to be joined by two experts, Yolanda Haigiris. Hello. A neuropsychologist from Spain mm -hmm. and Rosemary Wilson, a life coach from London. Today we're going to be talking about MS and mood, so please interact on Facebook and send us your questions. We would love to have them answered and we will answer as many as we can in the next 30 minutes. There are some housekeeping rules which I am just going to read out so that I don't get them wrong. So please do not send questions relating to treatments as we can't discuss that. And secondly, we hope that you would stick to questions relating to the topic that we're discussing this evening, which is MS and mood and emotions. So we do have a couple of questions here, so I'm going to start off. So we have a question in from Montse Diaz, and the question is, can MS affect your mood? What I mean is about being happy and five minutes later being super sad, as if we were becoming a bit bipolar. Would you like to answer on that, Yolanda? Of course. Um, thank you, Montse, for your question. It is a key point, um, and I think it's going to be the repeated question uh, all over. MS will affect emotions. Yes, that's the, the, the fast answer. And the thing that you are suggesting is this specific um, uh, problem when you go up and down um, for no mm, apparent reason. And it, it will happen, it's not very frequent, but it may happen. And it's, it's been described in the literature and, and scientific people have uh, reported that already. So don't feel strange, that may happen. And, and it may be related with your MS or the way you cope with your MS. So yeah, it will happen. Rosemary, do you have anything to add in? Yeah, hi, hi Monza. So just to add to that, um, the th I think the great thing is that you're obviously you're aware of your moods, that they go up or, or down. And what you can do is, now that you're aware of them, is to start to put things in motion that you can actually um, help yourself. So create kind of an in inventory or a stock of things that you can go to that that helps you to put you in a more positive mood so you know you can't stop if you can't necessarily stop these mood swings from happening but what you can do is control what you do after you're even you're more aware of what's happening so i do i would suggest that you also you have them but just create some feel good memories some some things that you can go to and um, make yourself feel 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 better we'll, we'll probably talk about this a little bit more later so um, that's that's the first thing i'd just like to add to that Thank you. I actually have two things just to, first of all, our apologies for starting a little bit late. And second of all, I never ask these lovely ladies to introduce themselves. So if you would like to go first, Yolanda. <laughs> no problems. Uh, well, you already introduced us a little bit. My name is Yolanda Haigiras. I'm a neuropsychologist. Uh, I work in a hospital in, a, in an MS unit in Madrid, and I'm here to offer my help as long as it has been requested, so happy to be here, thank you. Thank you. And Rosemary. Yeah, hi, thank you for introducing us, Aoife, you're doing a great job, <laughs> thank you. Um, my name is Rosemary Wilson, as Aoife said, I'm a life coach from London, and I help men and women to create a more positive mindset so they can feel more fulfilled in life. So I was diagnosed with MS in 2003, so I'm here for, for two reasons. I'll offer my expertise as a life coach, and also share some of my experiences on what I do to help myself to live a re you know, relatively um, stress-free life that really helps with my, my MS. So, thank you. Thank you. So we have another question in here. It's from Joan Jordan in Ireland, a friend of mine. And she has asked if you have any tips or advice for managing your mood during Christmas, which can be quite a stressful time. So, if you'd like to start, Yolanda. Uh, yes. Um well, I have to confess that it, it also stressed myself, and that, <laughs> that, that has to be applied to me. But don't, uh, I will say that the first thing you have to do is think what is Christmas for you. Uh, and, you know, mm -hmm. go to the ground of, of what is this huge, mad um, period of the year. And, and allow you to do things that you actually like. Because you don't have, we, we just get lost into a lot of things and... and 
put uh, responsibilities on top of our capabilities just to you know get mm, everything sorted and maybe that's not the point so um, you definitely have to mm, go away from stress and and to do it so you can you know it, it's a very easy exercise to write down two lists what do I like from Christmas what I don't definitely like from Christmas and you know allow you to kick off a couple of things that you don't like and you know enjoy make your Christmas mo much more enjoyable thank so you so do it yeah. would you like to add to that Rosemary I'd like to add a little bit more more to that from thanks like Yolanda as well so Joan um, Christmas everyone gets quite caught up in the kind of frenzy I'm going to call it of Christmas and we tend to do things above and beyond what we used to do back at, you know years ago and I think that it's really important to just strip it back, take it back to basics. Um, what does Christmas actually mean to you? I think about, when I think about Christmas, I think about connection and conversations, um, making it fun, that's important. It's a time of year where you get to stop, you get to slow down, you get time off work if you're off work, you get to just unwind. So I think it's just about strip it, stripping it back and just remembering what, why you do Christmas and you know, what, how important it is for you. And also ask for help. Are all those things really necessary that you're doing? You know, are you getting actually a kick about a kick out of saying it's stressful? So just take some steps back and readdress and, and ask yourself some questions. How important Christmas is for you? Thank you very much. We have a question in from Vanessa who would like to know the best way to advise her newly diagnosed daughter on how to combat mood swings that she suffers and they state that they had no idea that this could be related to MS until they saw it on Facebook. Mm. So would you like to start with that one, Rosemary? Yeah, so, um, so you're obviously a great mum that you're looking out for your, your, your daughter and, and being really supportive. I think it's really, really um, good to encourage her to talk, to talk about her feelings. If she can't share, if she's not ready to share, she can write things down so that when she is ready to share, Encourage her that it's a safe space to, 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 to talk about how she's feeling. You know, she could be, the mood swings could be because of something else. It could be related to MS or it could be something else. So the most important thing is for her to, to share with you and feel safe and give herself, you give her permission to, to share with you and listen. I think Yolanda, we were talking about this earlier, about listening, not just listening to respond, but just listening. That's really important to help her and support her through that, um, that, that, that time of, of what she's going through. Actually, I, I mean, I agree with you, Rosemary, but I'm, I would be much more concerned about this mum mm. because it's very difficult for the daughter to face with diagnosis and everything. Yeah. But, you know, families here are quite lost and, mm. and their lack of skills sometimes because they want to do the best and they don't know how to do it. So. Um, thanks for Vanessa for mm. your question because it is very important for you as a family to also ask for help to also get you very well informed on what is going on um, with MS and which are the symptoms and and what happened emotionally because you get very frustrated when you don't know what to do or we don't you don't understand what happens mm. why your daughter is going up and down so it's very important that you also get informed and find um, um, your uh, tools, your, your skills also. So you, you will help your daughter very much if you do have your own tools to do it. So Yeah, and I think that that's a really important message. Not only is this girl just diagnosed, but her family have also mm -hmm. just received this news too. And the emotions that everybody can feel at that time can really be heightened. So I think that's very good advice, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we have a question in from Karen Ann, who was wondering if you can give any tips to people about staying upbeat as MS can send your emotions all over the place. So would you like to start with if that you one? Stay, sorry. Um, to keep yourself upbeat as emotions can like like keep you sent. in yeah. a good mood, happy. Okay. Yeah. So what can you do to be like that? I mean, that's a big question. Uh, um, I think you have to um, know yourself. You have to be aware of 
what makes you happy and go for it. I mean, uh, a very important message here is that you are a person and you, on top of that, you have a disease, but you still, ha you still are a person with a lot of uh, very good things and some maybe not that good things, but still you have to find what is your core point, your, what is your value and what makes you happy. And as, an, as a normal person, I mean, for me, if you ask me the same question, what do you do to stay happy? I mean, doing things that make me happy. And I don't, I don't have a mess, but I think that um, applies to everyone. It doesn't matter that you have a mess. I mean, if you want to be happy and stay up there, just try to find things that make you stay there. Okay. Would you like to add to that? Please? What's the, the lady's name? Is it Car Her Car name was Karen Ann. Car Carol Ann. Hi, Carol Ann. So um, it's a, that's a good question. I think it's important to think about the choices you have. So moods sometimes can be a choice. So some of the, some of the things I do, I like to exercise. Exercising makes me feel good. I like music and I like to dance. So I find, I, as I was saying earlier, I have like a stock of go-to things that I like, that I enjoy, and I focus on those. If I'm feeling a little bit low or tired or um, not quite right, I focus on those things. So I have a, a, a journal, a diary, and I say, oh, I'm not quite sure, what can I do today? And I put my headphones in, I dance around the house, um, you, know, and, you know, even tapping my feet, it just makes me feel better. So create a stock of things that you can do for yourself, and that's, I find that really helpful for me. And maybe that's, that's something that's helpful for you. Um, one size doesn't fit all, so you go and find what's important to you and what works for you. You might like drawing, I don't know, you like, might like being in the countryside, walking, I don't know, talking, meeting with a friend for uh, coffee, but you find your thing and do more of those things. And as somebody who has MS, I would like to come in on that and just say that I have a box at home that has fluffy socks, some chocolate, some popcorn, my favorite <laughs> movie, a face mask. And if I'm having a particularly bad or low day, that really perks me right up. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So we have another question in here from a doctor who is talking about a link between relapse and flares in autoimmune conditions. Is this something you have experienced yourself or with your patients or clients? So maybe we'll go to you, Land, on that one. Maybe on the professional yeah. point of view. Um, well, I think it's quite clear that emotions will affect um, you as a person. And if you have any kind of um, uh, autoimmune disease, it will also um, affect you even a little bit more. Um, we do ha all have the experience, all my patients, when, when they come to see me, they're very scared of, you know, they, when, they, mm, when they are about to do something very stressful or they're going to, to a wedding or, um, you know, um, um, they're pregnant and they're very worried about, uh, you know, delivery. Very stressful uh, moments in life, they're very scared of, Will be will I be able to manage this, or will that affect me, or will I will I have some kind of relapse? Um, because actually, they afterward they come over again and say, you know, I was telling you that I, last year was very stressful, and here I am, I, I I'm you know, I'm back on on that track. So, yeah, it will affect definitely stress, affect um, uh, the probability to. Uh, have more autoimmune um, disturbances, and that's why you have to be to be very careful with uh, stress coping. That's basic. What's your experience? So, well, having um, MS myself, um, this is something that I've experienced years ago. I would probably say when I worked in in. Um, finance I used to be I'd probably say I had quite a stressful job lots of projects long hours and I'm I'm quite an energetic person so I'd say I'm, ha I'm I'm very energetic when I'm angry very energetic when I'm sad very energetic when I'm happy so all of those things and what I think happened was underlying I was just causing more stress on myself that I just didn't realize so what I do now is and I, I make it a choice I I, cause I, I saw that my symptoms flared up when I was quite stressed 
you know, not sleeping properly, not looking after myself. So I decided to rethink how do I do this and, and the awareness of what stress can do to me really, really does help. So I could probably say I've pretty much eliminated stress from my life. Um, things that I used to worry about that used to elevate my um, cortisol levels or my, my hormone levels, you know, stress levels, I just don't. I let them go. I ask myself, how important is this going to be in two weeks, three weeks, a year from now? If it's not important, I just let it go. And I just find myself in a much more peaceful place. And again, my symptoms are phenomenally re reduced by just taking, checking in with my stress levels. So I really um, believe that that's something that helps me. Okay. And a question that's just come in, interestingly enough, in relation to that last question, um, from a Susanna saying that she feels that her MS comes from or is provoked by her emotions, and is that possible? Well, Susanna, you can never know. I mean, there is, mm. it seems to be a link, but, uh, you know, some, uh, one thing is linked to uh, aspects, and the, uh, another different thing is to uh, think that one caused the other one. Y you can never know. But um, what is well known that is that a stress will um, will um, um, increase the uh, probabilities of uh, getting worse in, uh, at some point. So, but you can you can be sure, not not at this point. Mm. Yes. Well, don't forget to send us in your questions on this very interesting topic so far. Um, so please do get them on into us. And I'm just going to ask: Are there any? adjustments that people can make to their lifestyle to better manage their well-being? Um, well, definitely for me, um, my own experience is, first and foremost, is uh, healthy eating. So, you know, I practice the 80-20 rule. Um, and who's that question from? Is it someone specific? Your name? Well, it, it just came in, but I don't see any. Oh, okay. It. So, um, I practice healthy eating. I 80-20 um, rule, so I have a little of what I like, but I just don't go crazy. And I exercise, I like to move, I like to keep moving, and I do practice um, moving as much as I can. So I, I work out often, and it doesn't have to be anything strenuous, just gentle walking, um, you know, just what fits in for you, what you can do. You know, if it's upper body, you can work on, or, or your lower body, just keep yourself moving. Just do something for yourself that, that, that helps you um, to move around. And I, I, th I think that, that really works for me. So those two things are great, obviously great start to, to help your, your overall well-being. I will add something if you allow me. Sure. That is, um, we, we in, in our team, we are very keen into inform people. Because I think if you know uh, the, the bits and bobs of your disease, you can face things in a more uh, aware mm. manner. So you have to um, find a good source of information. It can be your doctor, it can be a professional help, it can be... But try to find when, when, when is your time, when you feel ready uh, to know about uh, DMS, find good information that you know, put you mm. in the real world of, of your situation and from there start doing things uh, to promote your health. Mm. Thank you. And I think there's that saying too, isn't it? The more you move, the better your mood. Oh. I think that applies to everybody, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah. We have another question in from Karen Ann and she, she experiences her brain processing slowing and she gets stuck and her brain gets tired. And she's wondering, do these problems happen to everyone? And is there anything people can do to prevent it from getting worse? Well, um, if you allow me, mm -hmm. uh, I want to say that um, what is uh, Caroline? Karen Ann. Karen Ann. Uh, what he's suggesting is that you feel that you do things slower. And that's one of the m main features in, in people with MS, you know, is even though they're very different symptoms and it's even each patient is different from mm. another one but this is a common point from the cognitive point of view and and this is it i mean doing things slower 
Um, so that is going to happen, but mm -hmm. you know, um, once more you have to learn on how to deal with it, and that mm, don't allow this change your habits or change your mm, living style. I mean, um, if you need to work through it, just do it, because you can you can stay there and and do your work. So no no problem with being that problem but, you know, work around it. So I, I think, um, Karen Ann, I think what's really important and something that we all forget is cut yourself some slack. Um, I'm not sure if that's an English saying or that translates. Give yourself permission to be different. Things are different. You can accept them and just do things differently for yourself. So if you're, if you're finding you're a bit slow, you can write, uh, write things down um, using um, audio equipment's great, just a voice recorder. If there's something, you know, there's so much great technology out, you can just use something to, to remind yourself of something. But just recognise that things are different and give yourself um, permission and, and power to do things differently and you'll feel so much better about that for yourself. That's actually really interesting because I'm thinking back to when I was in college and I used to use a dictaphone to record my tutorials yeah. <laughs> because I'd often forget what my lecturers had said to right. me. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have a comment here that we've often heard that people living with MS often feel guilty because sometimes they think they're not being a good mum or wife or partner. How can this guilt be managed? Would you like to start with that one, Rosemary? Yeah, um, I, 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 start, I, I might say something a little bit controversial here. I, I banish guilt from my, uh, my dictionary in terms of feeling bad about things that I think I should do or, or think that someone else thinks I should do. So I give myself choice and options. So you are an amazing mum, who, whoever's answered that question, or amazing dad. Your children love you. You do what you can for them. So you, you, shouldn't feel, you shouldn't feel the need or necessarily to feel guilty about what you can or can't do for your children. You do as much as you can and that they know that, you, they feel that you love them. Have a conversation with them as well. Just explain to them how you're feeling, you know, be, be honest with them as much as you can do and tell them that mummy and daddy still love you and that I'm doing things differently because I've got um, a, a condition, however you want to explain that. Does that, does that answer your, I hope that answers your question or? Yes, I think so. Yeah. May I add yes. something to that? Once again, I think that if you feel guilty about something, it's because you may not understand what is going on. Uh, if you really know what is um, MS about and what you can find, uh, at some point you, you have to, you know, as you say, allow yourself to uh, fail on some points, mm -hmm. but you know, go for, uh, further in another one. So, um, to manage uh, this uh, guilty feeling, it's also important to be well informed and to get control of your things. Mm -hmm. Once again, mm -hmm. to have to regain the control of your life is something that will allow you to pass uh, and, and eliminate of your vocabulary mm -hmm. <laughs> this awful word that you know. Yeah. It's very, I mean, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guilt and stress. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's another question here. Often those of us living with MS find it difficult to explain there is something wrong with us, as we often don't look sick but are exhausted all the time. How do people with MS explain this to family and friends? Yeah, that's a great question. Yes. Great, that's a great <laughs> question. Yeah, thanks for that question yeah. because I think mm, you're not alone on that feeling. No. Um, <laughs> so you're not al uh, you're not alone in the life. So if you go to your doctor, you probably can bring someone from your family with you, and you need to share things, and you need to share things uh, up to the point that the person you have in front of you will listen to you. I mean, some people wouldn't like to know anything about your disease, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Mm -hmm. You don't have to force anybody to know further than they allowed or they're ready to, to talk about. But if there's some interest of what is going on with you and with your disease, I mean, 
just share it freely and don't don't um, the way you explain things would probably be the way that people in front of you receive that thing. Mm. I, I say this to my patients many, many times. If you, you feel natural about your disease, the person in front of you will take that naturality and there will be no problem. But if you're you know, very worried or not sure, this is also um, being perceived by this person. So if you find difficult to communicate, just give it, give it a thought on how well or how aware you are on, on, on this uh, problem because mm. you may be trespassing things to the, to the other people. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we have a question in from Diane. Um, she was diagnosed with depression in winter before being diagnosed with MS and was wondering, has anyone on the panel uh, ex had experience in, in using light therapy to help with some of the emotional side of things? You mean light? Light, light, light yes, light therapy, L-I-G-H-T. Well, no I, don't know, I don't know if you're, I, I don't know if that has to do with this, um, um, this, um, I, I don't, uh, I have to say that I, I don't have any information about a proper light uh, therapy, but, you know, going outside, um, um, uh, being in open spaces and, you know, uh, sunlight, everything, this kind of um, a scenario will definitely improve your mood. Okay. So I don't know if, if she's talking about this or any other I don't therapy. Know if it's possibly around maybe seasonal affect disorder. Maybe. I know that that's light therapy, right? Am I? Well, but that wouldn't be a therapy. That would be yes, an well, Yes, yeah. True. So I don't know. I don't know. We should be, you know, knowing a bit more of, of your question to answer properly. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, there's a question about diet. We hear a lot about diet and MS. Does diet affect my mood? Well, um, it can do, um, as with, with um, lots of things in life. Um, I know when I used to eat um, I, not so well, I know I, I'd get slumps in the afternoon, sugar cravings, etc. Um, and, you know, I'd feel low or tired. Now I'm very, um, I, I keep my, my diet, my nutrition at an even keel, so I'm, I manage that very well. And I, I, you know, m my mood is, is pretty, pretty upbeat most of the time. So I imagine that what you eat, what you put in your, your body, I mean, there's lots of research and studies that, that talk about um, what you eat and your, your diet and your nutrition and what impact that has on your health. So I'm sure that would affect your your, your mood um, and how you're feeling. So I think it's just important to nurture your body really well and look for things that are um, energy giving rather than energy sapping. That's, um, I think that's probably quite, quite key. Actually, what is, I think is really affecting uh, is your energy. And you know, if you feel energetic, you will feel mm. less fatigued yeah. and that will definitely influence your mood. So it's a kind of, um, loop there that you have to take care about. Okay, yeah, thank you. Much more positive, yeah. There's when we often see that when people have just been diagnosed with MS, there is hu a huge sense of fear for the future. How does it impact having children, marriage, work? What advice would you give to those who have just been diagnosed overcoming those fears? I can start with that one. Yeah, I'm please do. Um, I think what's important to focus on throughout um, your, your early diagnosis or, or, or during your time managing the disease um, is to focus on what's in your control. You can sure you can plan for the future, but the future is out of your control. So I, I think it's important to focus on the now and what's in your control now. Create options for yourself. So when you create options for yourself that gives you power so you know if you meet someone you're not yet married or if you are married you know you need to it's important to communicate with your partner or your or any future partner communicate with your children and and keep yourself as healthy as possible so that you are you know around for them and and, and healthy for them as well so i think that's that's quite key mm -hmm. 
and actually if you if you if your future could be mm, uh, worrying you uh, at any point because you you want to get married you want to have children or whatever um, I think obviously you have to regain control mm -hmm. uh, but you also have to know what is important for you and yeah. you know do things from there mm. because if you do things from your actual will it will definitely mm. maybe right maybe wrong it doesn't matter but that was the thing you wanted to do and that will offer you some you know relax um, um, opinion on what happened whatever it happened yeah so I think it's also very important to do things and um, to know you mm -hmm. to know what what is um, good for you or, or what would you avoid and then work from there in, um, to the future but in the moment yeah in the present yeah mm -hmm. and I think back to diagnosis myself and I know that that is quite a stressful time and I remember thinking to myself shortly afterwards that the emotional turmoil that I put myself through in that time was actually far worse than receiving the diagnosis itself because I was worrying about things that have yet not happened and will probably never happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay. Free okay. Young. So I would like to thank Rosemary and Yolanda for coming today. And I've been delighted to um, chair this discussion. I hope that you've all enjoyed it. And then thank you all so much for taking part and for sending in your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.